Hello, y'all on YouTube. This is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today, we have a very special unboxing. Something that came in from Monkey Corp. Or maybe the Monkey's Edge? I don't know. Let's take a look. All right, today I'm opening it up with my Protec TR3. This is my automatic anniversary gift from my wife. This is the MagnaCut version right here. It's got the little lock. Got this a few years ago as a gift on our anniversary. I thought it was super cool. Let's get into this thing here. Uh, I just have to open a couple of these. And that should get us right in. Now, TR3 did this one. It was one of their first ones in Pro in MagnaCut, so I was super excited to get this. They later on learned how to heat treat a little bit better, so I think the heat treat wasn't stupendous on this one. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so what do we have in here? All right, there's a box. Make sure there's no receipts in here. All right, so hold on a second. All right, there we go. Oh, dropped. All right, yeah, put that over there. Okay, so here we go. Protec. Hmm. Move this out of the way. All right, let's take... And I'm going to keep running over that, aren't I? It's noise. Crumble that up so it doesn't keep making noise and be distracting here. All right, so what are we looking at? We're looking at a Protec. A TR3. Hmm, I wonder what's different about this one. Let's take a look. Could this be something maybe I saw at Blade Show? I don't know. Let's take a look. Now, typical Protec packaging. It's been a while since I bought something from Protec. I got my... My, my big Bigfoot knife from there, and I thought this knife was probably going to be my Bigfoot knife for the year again. But I think I'm wrong, thanks to an awesome channel member letting me know that this was available. All right, so notice something different. This looks a lot like my TR3 here, but this has thumb studs on there. That's interesting. No lock. Okay, all right. I like the clip that they have on this one. This is cool. Definitely kind of nice. All right. Very, very, very cool. All right. Let's take a look. See what, what's different about this. All right. Hmm. It doesn't open. Why? Because it is a thumb stud one. This is like my Mordax. This is a manual one. Now notice, I saw this one at Blade Show. And the one I saw, of course, was a super fancy edition. Now there's aluminum scales. So it's pretty light, as far as I know. Looking inside, they look like they are, yeah, pretty uh, pieces of aluminum inside. Uh, milled all the way through. Backspacer is kind of a, two pieces coming together. You have a little place for a lanyard loop. Definitely some jimping on here. You can definitely use that. You could choke up if you wanted to, for sure, right? Um, this is S35VN blade steel. Pretty sharp edge. As far as... As far as the the blade stock, it looks very similar. I would definitely say it's pretty similar. Now, it's obviously very different on the inside because one here is an automatic lock and the other one is going to be a, um, a manual one. So, this is where it's different. It drops like that. So, what this is closer to, let me grab it, is my, my Mordax, which is also button lock. And this one here is a button lock. Now, it's a little sticky at first, and that's kind of typical of Protec. They certainly are. Now, I will say, this is very sharp on this part up here. I'm a little disappointed about that, that's for sure. I'm, I will have to file that down, because that is really annoying. I mean, that is sharp like it's going to cut me. Yeah. So, I don't know if you can see. I'll show you how sharp it is. It's already scraping nail pieces off. You see that right there? It's it's ridiculously sharp. Everything else is fine, but these thumb studs are, are kind of a, a little insane. I'll just say that. And of course, I'm going to probably put skiffs on here. So when I take these off to file this down a little bit, because I don't want to do it on, on the blade like this, I'll be, I'm, I'm too close to everything here. I want to take the blade off. But I will make sure it's a little more comfortable. But I do like this. I like this a lot. Nice to have a, a different alternative now. It's a little smooth, but the nice thing about thumb studs is, and nice thick handle is that I've got plenty of grip on here. 
beautifully chamfered all the way around nice and rounded rounded here as well i like this your thumb goes in really easy great action great axis exactly where you want your thumb to be which makes me wonder is it exactly the same it really is which tells me the thumb stud would work brilliantly on there if it wasn't an automatic right so yeah there you go very very cool now this is different in the regard that this right here has oh that's interesting all right so you could probably put thumb studs on this one as well thinking about the placement up here because it's very similar looks like it as dimensions go yeah you could put the thumb studs right there and that would be make this really nice well, nice to have a, another deployment action on this one wonder if i could get somebody somebody who does thumb studs and drilling and put those on i think that would be really cool yeah i like it i like it now i'm hoping i'm really hoping that stickiness breaks in right let's just kind of keep going a little bit here see if we can get rid of that This is really sharp. All right, so very cool. So everything about it, I like the size, good size. Put it in my hand. I have large hands with big meaty fingers, so I got extra room here. So my hands are going to be equivalent to an extra large hand with normal size fingers, a double extra large hand with smaller fingers, right? Thinner fingers. So um, extra, extra large hand with me, big meaty fingers, probably a double extra large hands with meaty fingers are going to be almost over the edge, but I think you'd be on there. And then you can certainly choke up. You can do a trigger pull on this one for sure, which is nice does have some nice jimping here, and the thumb studs there give you a nice pressure point. Thumb studs are relatively out of the cut cutting path pretty well. I like that. It's S35VN blade steel, which can be pretty nicely if it's heat treated well. I think this could be absolutely outstanding. I don't know what their heat treat is on S35VN, but typically, you know, you hopefully 61, 62, or 63, something like that, right? Be really, really nice. Make it a pretty decent steel. Usually it's good to sharpen and retains its edge well. It's pretty corrosion resistant, so that's really, really nice. I like that. All right, so let's take a look. Reverse flick works nice. Thumb studs works nice. Reverse flick over here works nice, yeah. That's really nice. All right, so I like it. I like a lot of it. I think it's really cool. But that being said, let's see how the factory edge works. Ooh. Hmm. That's a little rough right there. So maybe a little strop might make it a little bit better. I do have my strop over here. So why don't I go ahead and try that real quick Ooh, wrong strop <laughs> my son was in here earlier and he was moving all my stuff around the joys of teenage sons liking to reorganize your stuff right let's see what's the angle here are we about 20 20 percent 28 20 degrees that would ooh, went down a little too sharp there Not bad, not bad. Um, feels pretty sharp. Really cool. Really cool. All right, so we're going to put that off to the side. I am going to go ahead and probably jump right in. I want to see about maybe putting skiffs on here. I think that would be probably worthwhile. So in order to do that, I have to take this apart. Now, that is a hex screw right there. Does it happen to fit this one? Nope. So I'll have to get a different hex screw. Are we T8s here? Nope, those are hex screws as well. Is this a T6 down here? Yeah, T6s for those. And those are also hex screws, so that's the only one they'll be able to use. 
I will need to get some other tools. All right, so I'm going to guess that we are maybe. Let's see. Is it possibly this one? Yep, so this is the screw right there. All right, let's see. Are they the same size over here? Nope. Are they one size smaller? Yeah, okay, so, so what we're looking at for that is a 332nd um, Allen wrench, and then we have a 564th Allen wrench, right? So let's begin by taking these apart. Three screws and then one screw. So that happens, a little button pops out, which is typical. Oh, these look a little bigger, interesting. All right, there's the blade stop pin. And it looks like we have washers on the inside, that's nice, very cool. That's where it engages on the lock. I'm assuming this is steel. Yep, steel. Steel washers. Yep. Oops. Steel. Got steel washers there as well. Put the blades up in over there. Uh, let's see. This should come out right. Hmm, that one's in there pretty good. No, I'm not going to fight with it too much. I will let that be for now. Okay. Now let's see what skip washers fit in there. So first we need to figure out it's a quarter inch. That's the first thing. And Quarter inch one sixteenth. So they're not they're not messing around, man. They're going big. Go big or go home, right? Quarter inch and uh, sixteen and one sixteenth. So I need to get quarter inch. These are all six, six mil, six mil, here we go. Quarter inch one sixteenth. All right. Now I think I have some quarter inch multi row. I thought I did. Let me just look. I doubt they'll fit, but you know, hey, we can always try. That's two millimeter, quarter inch, two millimeter. Oh. Oh, yeah, I got those extra in case I ever got another uh, Andrew Demko. Quarter inch, one sixteenth, 13 ball, that's the same one. Quarter inch, one sixteenth. Quarter inch, and yeah, that's it. So I guess I only have that. That's fine. No problem. Nice fit. Should be evened up. Nice there, nice there. Yep, so that's a good fit. So we'll put these over here. Oh, lost the screw finally came out. That's cool. All right, so where's my oil? This is where we've got to get our spring in. Let's put our place on pin in first. We'll put the spring on next. Now this is where we can choose one or two things. Sometimes I will try. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. I will use a little bit of a heavier oil on here. And then I will a little bit of the heavy oil inside here and on this area. That tends to make it work a little bit better. Now, I gotta work this together.
I did forget, didn't I? Golly. These are really rough, so. So I just use a nail file like that, file down the uh, the ridges that were really sharp, and I forgot to do that when I first did it. So we're gonna start over. Nice skips on there. So again, to recap, the pivot here is a three thirty seconds, um, three thirty second one, right? This one right here, okay. And then the three body screws are going to be a five sixty fourth, right? That's the three body screws right there, a five sixty fourth. And then if you wanted to remove the clip, which you don't have to do for this this assembly, by the way, so. Don't feel like you have to, but if you did want to remove the body screws, that's going to be a simple six millimeter T6. All right, so that's what fits right there is the T6. So like if you got a lynch clip or something, you want to put that in because you don't like the goofy flat little one, you can put that in there. So that is what we would put in there for that one. Don't think I have a lynch clip. I may look after the video is over, but uh, and then as far as the the actual skiff cage bearings it, they're not the typical ones you would have like on the mordax the mordax took the uh, 3 16th much smaller ones on this one but this one took the quarter inch 1 16th the 13 ball count one um, i didn't have any multi row so i don't know if it could take a multi row but i can tell you as great as these are i know they're steel bearings i know protect does a fantastic job and i'm sure they make their own and you know they do feel Pretty nice. There's just something better about putting skiffs in there. So I'm just going to tell you, I think they're just better. So I do like the, the skiffs in there for sure. So there you go. Very nice. All right. So in case anybody is curious, we'll do a quick little zoom. I'm going to put this away. Let's put the wheels away, get them out of the way so we don't spill them anywhere. Screwdrivers on the way, put my magnet back. All right, so, oops, I'm going to zoom in for a little money shot here. Uh, this is what I'll, in case anybody wants to see what they are. There you go. That is the size, and just, just sorry, just zoom in a little bit more. There you go. All right. So, these are the ones that you'll want to put into the knife. I'm going to put these over here. I, you know, I don't do automatics on the Protex, but I absolutely will do a manual. I'll absolutely put in 
uh, skiffs on a manual on a protect on a protect manual protect knife, right? So I've done it on the Mordax. I did it on a ton of Malibus. Malibus and, and Mordax fit the same skiffs, but uh, apparently not the TR3. This is a completely new design, but that's cool. It's a much bigger washer. Got a whale everywhere. All right, so a much bigger washer and. All right, that stick is already starting to go away. And this is much nicer holding on here. I mean, I won't lie to you, it's not, the, it's not like not aggressive at all, but it's certainly much better. But what's interesting is I could probably put some O-rings on here. If I want it to have a little bit. I don't know if it would make a difference, but I, I certainly could do that. All right, that lock stick is almost completely gone now. I like that. No? Oh, we are clearing. We are hitting that. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I don't think I'm liking that. These are too thick. I might, if I can find O-rings that are a little thinner, not as thick. See, they were hitting right on the corner right there. There's not enough clearance. So I'm not digging that. So if the other ones I have are thinner, and I can get them on there, I'll try them. But if you don't see them on there, that means I just need to find some thinner O-rings, probably the nitrile ones that are 70A. The, they're the 006 ones, probably will work, but if if I remember to get them, I'll get them. If not, I like it the knife as it is. It's pretty smooth. That's the first iteration of it. It doesn't have all the texture like some of these other ones do, right? Like the mermaid scales or dragon scales, whatever you want to call it, uh, on this one here. But it is similar. This has the recessed clip, though. So I wonder if this is the same one that fits. Uh, Lynch has these. So we'll have to look. Because I'm not a big fan of that. It's kind of thin, but, you know, it can work. Yeah, that lock stick's almost completely gone. And it is, you know, is our skiffs necessary? No. Are they nice? Yeah, I like them. I like them. They usually make a knife I feel better instantaneously. So so there you go. All right. So that's my pro tech. Um, Uh, we did put some skiffs on there, so, you know, you get a little bonus extra here. Um, I like it. First impressions are good. This is unboxing and, of course, uh, a skiff swap. Yeah, I was happy to do that and figure out what size they were. Um, I like it. Um, I will say, learned it had hex screws. T6 is for this right here, obviously. You can actually some, see some of the Loctite on that T6 that they had there already. don't know if I can get that off with this. Yeah, there was a little red Loctite still on there. Interesting. That's from when they first put it together. So, very cool. It is a 35VN blade steel, which can be fine. I did do a little strop on this thing, so, you know, we did a little. Kind of see if we can get that edge just a little bit, a little bit nicer. Felt like it was about a 20 degree edge. So... to work on that edge a little bit typically i don't have little cutting performance issues right away i think you know this is the first iteration of a knife first production run really truly in this version so obviously we discovered some things with the thumb studs that i took care of um a little disappointing hopefully they'll, they'll iron that out you know as being a first iteration because uh that's that's just not expected for pro tech to be quite honest with you I'd rather pay an extra five dollars for get a little better thumb studs, right? Um, that's just my personal opinion, because um, that to me is if you're going to be a thumb stud exclusive, you want to do that, right? I mean, yeah, it's it's a button lock, so you could do a button lock, but thumb stud's a big deal. So, all right, there we go. This is a Protect TR3. This is the manual button lock. It's not the automatic S35VN blade steel. It does have thumb studs, and I've got a little, a little blade to clean that off. Thumb sets were a little scratchy at first. Um, took it apart, put skiffs in, nice and centered. Action's beautiful. I like it. It was everything I, when I handled the prototype, and I have some videos on Instagram, and I think I published a short also on YouTube, where I actually, uh, one of the ProTech guys had his really premium version of the TR3, and I had a chance to check it out and did some a short on it. Really cool knife. So 
yeah, there you go. Hey, uh, if you have any questions about this video, let me know in the comments down below. Any questions to the channel, let me know as well. I try to reply to most of my comments. I can't tell you I can get to all of them. Being at 6,000 subscribers, it's kind of a, it gets harder. Uh, I do try. I do try really hard. So just know that. Um, if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, or entertaining, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well? Subscribing and liking the videos really helps out the channel. Helps the channel produce more content, do more things, ultimately do more things for you guys. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who watches the videos, who enjoys the content, who's part of the live streams, who comments. Thank you to every one of you guys out there. I really do appreciate you very, very much. And a big thank you to the channel members out there. Um, you guys help me um, do things way sooner than I ever thought I'd be able to. And I appreciate you. You guys also encourage me times when I do this. This is part-time. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. Uh, I have a full-time job, so I do this as fun, as a hobby. And uh, you channel members really encourage me many times. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much to you guys. And there's a couple of ways for me to say thank you to channel members. I do a once-a-month members exclusive giveaway. And you've been so generous with the memberships. I want to be generous back to you guys. And I try to find something really, really outstanding to give back to you guys to say thank you. So just know that um also um i also if you're a brand new channel member i like to give a, a sticker a channel st um a channel sticker to every brand new channel member if you've been a channel member for a while and you never asked for a sticker and you're a member right now or if you were a channel member and became a channel member again and you're a member right now and you've never asked for a sticker and you never gotten one email me as well i'd love to mail you a sticker for me to say thank you it's a personal way for me to say thank you because i usually write a, just a little thank you in there so thank you I appreciate you guys out there so very much. And thank you for watching the channel. If you haven't already, check me out over on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.